الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد Seeking knowledge Beneficial knowledge Al-Nafia Is An obligation upon every Muslim The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam Said Talib al-ilm faridatun Ala kulli Muslim That seeking the knowledge Is an obligation upon every Muslim The scholars they let us know that seeking the knowledge that it's ibadah, that it's a type of worship to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a means for coming closer to Allah so that in and of itself should be an encouragement also Talib al-Ilm Fariditun ala kulli Muslim that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim meaning seeking the wajib knowledge seeking the knowledge so a person is able to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded him or her to do and which is to worship him as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to what? we have to have knowledge we have to have ilm we have to have ilm on how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to know tahara we need to know purification we need to know uh, how to pray you know how to pray and the Prophet sallallahu said sallu kama raitumuni usalli pray as you see me pray how do we pray how can we see the Prophet sallallahu we see him by knowledge we understand how he prays by going back to the hadith in order to go to the hadith we need what? we need the Arabic language and in addition to that we need to know and study from the scholars and that will help us from falling into the various traps which lead us astray so first and foremost knowledge is an obligation upon us so that should encourage every single Muslim and Muslima to, to, to uh, strive to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge is also ibadah knowledge is also a, a, a type of worship and it's a way and a means for coming closer to Allah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمٍ سَهَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَى جَنَّةِ That whoever traverses a path, uh, uh, the, the path of knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. So that shows us that seeking knowledge is a means to paradise. And as the Salaf al-Saleh used to say, رضي الله تعالى عنه وجمعين, that that seeking knowledge the one who seeks knowledge is the one who is seeking Jannah and we also know that the gatherings of knowledge especially to learn the Quran are witnessed by the Malaika they're witnessed by the, the angels and we also know from authentic hadith that the everything in the sea everything uh, in the land makes dua for the Talib al-Ilm so the person who's seeking knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything in creation is making is supplicating for him or her so that with that being said it shows us the greatness of seeking knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says akhsha that the people who are most God-fearing is the ulama, it's the scholars. Why? Because of their ilm, their understanding of the kitab wa sunnah, and their practice of the kitab wa sunnah. So, that is another reason why we should strive to seek the knowledge, to seek Islamic knowledge especially. Because the ummah of Muhammad wasallam will not be benefited and not be corrected except for what that which corrected the uh, the first part of the ummah and I believe this is a statement of Imam Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu or rahimahullah ta'ala or perhaps it might have been Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala that he said that the la yasla awla hadhi ummah إلا بما لا يصل آخر هذه أمة إلا بما 
salaha awlaha or kama qal he said that this nation uh, the later generations in this nation or the later people who came, who come in this ummah that they will not be corrected except for that which the uh, uh, original generations, the first generations did. What was it? It was knowledge. It was ilm. Ilm kitab illah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was tamasik bi kitab wa sunnah. But the only way you can hold on to the, the kitab wa sunnah is by learning kitab wa sunnah. Is by studying. Is by seeking knowledge. And all of us get uh, uh, depressed from time to time. We feel that we're not gaining anything. That's a, 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 a thing the shaitan will whisper to you and say, you're not learning anything. You can't memorize anything. You can't memorize the Quran. You can't memorize anything from the Sunnah. You don't know Arabic. You don't know this. You don't know that. That's waswas from the shaitan. The Arabs have a, a very nice statement, which I always like to use with my students. They say, Man jidda wajid. And I always try to remind me that myself that, that statement. Man jidda wajid. Whoever uh, strives, they will attain. There is no doubt, even in the most difficult of sciences, for example, if you want to learn chemistry, or if you want to learn, uh, for some of us, math is very difficult. Uh, you want to learn trigonometry or, or trigonometry or uh, calculus or statistics or whatever. There is no doubt by putting in hours of studying that science that you're going to gain something. You may not become the great physicist and you may not become the great person who is a, a statistician or whatever, but you for sure will learn something. And this goes the same with Islamic sciences. Only the difference with the Islamic sciences is you'll get edger from Allah if your intention is correct. So there is no doubt the person who keeps in those books, keeps trying to learn Arabic, is going to learn some Arabic. They may not learn like the next guy. This guy might have finished those books in, two uh, in six months to a year or in two years and, and is able to translate for scholars in this. The other guy may be studying for 10 years and still might not be able to really translate. But they're going to get something if they stay, if they have istimrar, they continue in their studies. There's no doubt. Man jidda wajid. Whoever strives will attain. There, there's no doubt about that. As long as you're consistent. And another important aspect, uh, issue that the scholars always mention, because Talib al ilm is, is ibadah, as we mentioned, it's worship, that you have to have ikhlas. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Open your hearts to Allah and always remind yourself, sincerity is not going to come one time. You may start off sincere and during, during the lecture, you could be doing a lecture and then the shaitan comes to you, you see the people are enjoying the lecture and you become proud. You start to begin to improve your lecture and become very uh, nice in your speech and mention different types of wisdom and this and that and the other for the sake of the people. So the shaitan is going to come to you. Your desires are going to come to you. That's going to be constant. You have to always continually uh, purify your intention. And one of the mashayikh, they mention uh, an athar about Imam Malik that he would be uh, always moving his mouth. And they asked him, you know, Ya Imam, I'm paraphrasing this very loosely, Ya Imam, why, what, are, what, are you, what are you doing? And he said, I, I'm renewing my niyyah. I'm renewing my intention. He was, you know, making his stagfar and renewing his intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, hey, this is for Allah. Because he's, you can imagine what it's like to those great imams of the sunnah having hundreds and thousands of students looking in their face and they have hadith hundreds and thousands of hadith on their on their cap on in, in, in their head they've memorized and they're giving it to the people not just memorization but they're given the isnad not just the isnad but they're given the explanation not just the is explanation but they're given the fiqh and the wisdom of the hadith and the jurisprudence that show they, they were you know we don't even have scholars that can begin to be on the level of our salaf salih Ridwan Allah in that's, that's another important principle we have to always realize. Uh, we have great scholars in this day and age, and the ones who came before us. But the scholars of this time are not like the scholars, not like the Salaf, Salaf Asari. You know, we don't have people who memorize, like the Muslim Imam Ahmed, what Imam Ahmed, you know, however many 
either hundreds of thousands or possibly a million hadith, you know, that he, he, he had. You know, sahih and da'if. That, you know, they knew with the isnad. We don't, we don't have that, 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 that level in memorization or fiqh. Our scholars study their fiqh. They study from those imams. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam uh, Ahmed. So it shows us, again, and Allah preserved them and raised them up because of their sincerity. And so I want to leave and leave this uh, or mention something. As we mentioned Zibadah, we have to think about the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, showing us we can be rewarded for our knowledge or we can be punished for our knowledge. The Prophet wasallam said, In al nas yuqda alayhi yawm al-qiyamah rajun ustushida futiya bi fa'arrafu in ni'amu fa'arrafa qala fa ma'amaltu fiha qala ma taraktu qala qataltu fika hatta ustushida qala kadabt walakin walakinnaka an lakin ولكن أن فعلت اللي يقال هو هو شجاع وكما قال فقد كيل ثم أمر به فصعب لوجهه ثم أولك في النار the three people who will be dragged on their face and they'll be the first to be judged on the day of judgment is the first one, he was, a, he was a person who was martyred in the cause of Allah. So it shows, we know jihad is, an, is, a, is one of the greatest things you can do in Islam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with the sharia, according to kitab, with sunnah, uh, sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not according to jamaat takfir wa hijra, jamaat this group or this group uh, that are going astray. No, but based on ilm wa fiqh. That is one of the greatest types of ibadah that you can do. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when he was asked, "Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam an akthari," "Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam an rajul yuqatil shajaatin wa yuqatil hamiyatin wa yuqatil wa yuqatil riyain." Ayy dalek fi sabili Allah. "Qaal sallallahu alaihi wasallam min qatil li tukun kalima Allahi hi uliya hu fi sabili Allah azza wa jal." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked, which shows us the the greatness of jihad fi sabili Allah, and that also talib al ilm is a type of jihad, as the ulama mention. He he was asked about the person who who fights, you know, out of um, you know because he's excited, or it could be his nationalism or his his pride and his you know his his his, his will to fight, it. and the one who does it out of bravery and the one who does it to show off. Which one of these is fisa bidila? The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, "The one who fights strictly, man qatali li tukun kalimatullahi uliya to raise the kalimatullah." To make that supreme, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, to make that supreme, then this is fisa bilillah azza wa jal. So it's niyyah, it's your intention. The Prophet ﷺ said, in ma'amala bin yad, verily actions are tied to the intentions. So the second person in the other hadith we mentioned, which is the shahid we want to mention, is that the second person on the day of judgment is a person who was a person of knowledge. Uh, فأتي أبي فعرفوني عمو فعرفا قال فما فما عملت فيها قال قرأت فيك القرآن وتع و and the, uh, so the, the second person is the one he was brought and he will say that I read the Quran for you and I recited the Quran and Allah will say that you lied uh, you did it so that the people will call you a qari that you they will say you are a great reader and then it was said about you and he, and he was throw, thrown in the fire and mentioned in that with that person is also the person who was uh, so it was a person who 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 sought knowledge and they taught it which is who it's like scholars that that's what they do and it shows us that they if a person's intention is not pure then that seeking the knowledge and that teaching the knowledge will get them to the hellfire. It can either get you to the hellfire or it can either get you to Jannah. Talib al ilm Farid al kulli Muslim. And there's so many benefits of seeking the knowledge, and I meant to only make this about one or two minutes. Just some of the benefits that we, we gain in general from seeking the knowledge. For one, it will make us less dependent on other people. For example, for those of us who don't know Arabic language, then we're dependent upon people like myself to translate for them. And we and and 
there's no doubt that we're not free from mistakes. All of us, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata'in All the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those are those who make repentance. So then we're dependent upon translators. All of us who go to Dar es Salaam and those other beneficial book publishers, we're dependent upon their translations of Bukhari and Muslim. Even myself, I know Arabic. I'm not totally fluent in Arabic, and I go to the Arabic books. But at the same time, I also benefit greatly from those translated resources, because some of those words are very difficult, that you're not going to just find them in a dictionary, and that you may need them even from the scholars. So all that work's been done for you, from a translator. The point being, the more that you know that you seek the Arabic language, the less dependent on others you are, and dependent upon other people's mistakes. Even in the Quran, the translations of the meanings of the Quran, you have many things that are sometimes mistakes or that the language is not appropriate. It's an old archaic English. We don't say therefore and thou. We don't, uh, uh, you know, there's many words that, that people have even adopted, unfortunately, even as native speakers that we use that are, when we use them incorrectly, from the likes of these ones, from the likes of those ones. Where in the world, we don't even use that in the, in the English language. Not only that, and people use it incorrectly in English. So it shows us the importance by seeking the knowledge and trying to get back to the sources, we're less dependent upon other people and we're less likely to make uh, and carry the mistakes of others. Seeking the knowledge also puts us in contact with the ulama and allows for us to go to the sources. Seeking knowledge also allows for us to ask intelligent questions because when you have some khalfiyah, you have some uh, foundation within that particular science, for example, if it's an issue in Aqidah and you've studied books in Aqidah, then you can ask an intelligent question to the scholars. Seeking knowledge also helps us to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helps us to be on ilm wa fiqh wa basira in our ibadah. It helps us to be correct and have insight and correctness inshallah ta'ala in our, our worship. We don't have to always quickly, you, you shouldn't have to go to the scholars even about an issue of, for example, of water. Is this pure shaykh or not? You know, we should have some basic knowledge so that we can make those basic judgments about something that is already in, it's in the Quran and it's in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam and it's uh, already de dealt with by the fuqaha, by the scholars of jurisprudence. So we shouldn't have to say, is this water clean? Can I make wudu with this? Can I wipe over my socks? There's going to be issues, yes. We're going to need fatawa. We're going to need those issues. My point is about basic issues in the religion. The more knowledge you have, the less dependent you are on others that you have to ask about every single masail. Seeking the knowledge also uh, is, uh, as we mentioned in, in, in the hadith, that it, it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah favors, it, it shows that Allah loves the person who seeks knowledge. Uh, that the, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man bihi khayran, deen, that whenever Allah uh, wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So, we should not be discouraged if we have little knowledge. But the fact that we're going forward, that you learn something, then this is beneficial. If you learn the ayat a day, or an ayat a week for some of us is difficult, but at least you did that ayat. Trust me, at the end of the month, you'll have four ayats. Or at the end of the year, you'll have, uh, what, 48 ayat. This is, this is something great. I know many people who are my, my colleagues, that meaning we came to Islam together, and I've been Muslim now, mashallah, tabarakallah, almost uh, about 19 years or so, that we became Muslim at the same time. And, and many of them, they, they still don't know, probably, I, I'm sure of it, that there's several people that I can think of that cannot read Surah Al-Fatiha properly. And if they can do that, they don't know uh, another surah beside that. And they're still just Muslim, just hanging on the fence. They haven't tried to increase their knowledge. So that is a ni'mah from Allah. If Allah has favored you to, to elevate yourself a little bit, and you don't want to be like those people who, who, uh, who don't uh, strive to gain any benefit of their religion. Knowledge is also food for the soul. It's also something, it, it, it's something that strengthens the heart. Because the more we seek the knowledge, the more we talk about Islam, we get blessings in the, in the world, the unseen world. You know, the malaika are there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us reward and remembering us in a gathering because we're remembering Him. But also, 
uh, in this life. It's strengthening your Iman. It's strengthening your resolve about Islam and about Kitab al-Sunnah, and it's helping you be firmer as a Muslim. That comes from knowledge. So knowledge has many benefits, and we should not d get discouraged. Uh, and there's many stories of the ulama that we could we could we could relate about not being discouraged about seeking the knowledge, and we just have to seek a refuge in Allah, and we have to always ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to open up things for us, open up those doors. Never underestimate that. Be consistent in your knowledge. Tawakkal ala Allah. First and foremost, ask Allah. Like I, I always ask other students of knowledge about, you know, how to memorize the Quran. I say, hey, man, you know, for one, I'm not like you guys. You guys are Saudi, you guys are this, or you guys are Yemeni, you're Arabs. It's easier for you. It's your language. You know, I say, you know, it's so hard for me to sit down and memorize. You know, I'm starting now at later in life. And they say, first, seek uh, refuge in Allah. Ask Allah first. Make rakatain. And in your sujood, make dua to Allah and ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to open it up for you. And no doubt, he's, if you're wanting good, do you think Allah is going to leave you behind? No. But it's going to take work and it's going to be painful. You're going to have to stay up after Fajr. You're going to have to do It's not going to come as, as the Salaf used to say, and, and I've heard many mashayikh say, especially Shaykh Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah yarhamahu, used to say, La uh, yati al ilm. Knowledge doesn't come from comfort in the body. And you'll see this with the scholars. Many of the scholars you see, that even young ones, I know many young scholars in their late 40s even, and you can see their bodies already, they're, they're not very strong in their body, and they, because all they do is they sit in a chair, and they're teaching, and they're studying, and they're making miraja, and they're reciting the Quran, and they're known for their ibadah. And that takes a toll on the body. So there's no doubt you have to sacrifice more than likely aspects of your health. Seeking knowledge sincerely and in and, 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 and reality, it requires that kind of sacrifice. You're not the one who's out able to go play football, American football or uh, English football or whatever kind of football you want to play or volleyball or whatever kind of sports or get on the weights. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. And we strive to be balanced. But in order to really gain knowledge, it takes extra sacrifice whether other people are sleeping that you're in your book you're trying to memorize you're trying to you're making time for the knowledge and that's what we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and I hope this is beneficial and encouragement for others wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam